Uh, my name is Court Deansaw and I live in a van part-time on and off in Tofino, beautiful Tofino, British Columbia. So the door was created on Gabriel Island um, at this amazing wacky farm they call it. The guys are amazing people there. We kind of had a vision of doing a hobbit door. The original door was pretty rusty and it kind of came into this track here and was a little bit wangly so we figured why not sculpted of the wood you know and they start doing tons of that woodworking over there they've got a little mill going so when we got over there we figured you know let's go circular but such as with wood you kind of see the piece and go from there um, so everything's recycled on it and we got the pieces for the door from the basement of our old house in Nanaimo they're actually siding and as you see they crack out and break at times which need to be fixed but such as part of a van living, I think. <laughs> Always things that happen and have to be fixed. But yeah, so they, you know, we took chainsaws and carved all this out. And these are actually just two big chunks that were married together to give it kind of this eye shape that almost feels like you're going into a little hobbit home, I'd say. A lot of people feel that. And for me, it's nice because I have to crouch in because I'm so tall. So when I get in, you know, it's getting used to it now. But when I pump in, it's, you know, watch your head and cruise in. And, it just seems to be opening up into what I decided to create as a little sanctuary of my brain, I guess. <laughs> I love art, I love creativity, and I love nature. And everything that I've created here has been kind of that process and that story where um, where I go with my life and where I've seen and who I connect with. And as I was saying, you know, it's all a part of recycling and a way of being, I think. You know, an, an attitude of life and a level of stoke that you can have with basically garbage to some people that I can find and recreate and help turn into art and an idea and creativity for other people to be stoked on. As you can see, it's a little bit low for me, but you're, you're, you're perfect height. <laughs> In the future, you know, maybe pump the roof up, but uh, yeah, so kind of a lot of the stuff I collect is collected you know like I'm saying there so when I tree plant I've done that for four years there and go out into the woods and find beautiful pieces of bark to make the siding I kind of a lot of things I do is um, create from, from what I see so what do you see in nature you know what what the beautiful things in nature are and, and how does it work so when I think about like a tree you know, what's its skin what does it do um, how does it stay waterproof and you know how does it show itself and a lot of the pieces are already art they're already there and we just have to notice them and uh, that's what i love about creating with just looking in nature and, and kind of being present with it and inspired by the places you live you know the entire island here is next to i, don't know, I personally feel the best place i've ever been but i've been a lot of places but it is just something so special here the energy here the people here the atmosphere of it and Again, nature this is the big pull to me. A lot of the things that are created in here had to be compact, you know, where as a while I'm a six foot three larger person. <laughs> it's like, how do you create that space compact? Um, so well, for me, a big part was like a bed. You know, am I gonna have something where I'm gonna have couches that fold up or am I gonna have just a big old lounge area? And um, I kind of went with that thought where I love to relax with friends and family. So I call the van Snug's Vansion. Um, so it's just a big lounge party most of the time. Right now it's all drying out because this is real van living. <laughs> you go through the, through the whole winter and it, it's wet and it gets moldy and it gets kind of that dankiness to it, which is also why we love being out here in the West Coast for me personally. So I get to kind of experience that. and showcase that but you know as you can see it's it's damp so we're just kind of drying them out but my you know my main kind of goal was how do I find storage space you know how do I find areas where I can put as many awesome things I love to do in to a small space and that came into you know the bed you know utilize the bed as much as I possibly can and um, yeah go from there kind of I love the organic shape of life so that's where I started. So what I did was I started gutting it all down. So when I got the van, it was beautiful. I got it from Souk for quite cheap, actually. 
I saw it online and the first thing I saw actually was Snugs herself, <laughs> the, the seal. She was chilling uh, up top. I was talking to my roommate Mallory and we're like, okay, well, if the van doesn't come with the seal, we're not getting it. You know, <laughs> we had a plan. It was kind of a, a communal uh, affair of buying the van. So I went down and checked it out and instantly I was in love with the van. Um, I don't know if it was the blue, if it was just the size of it, or just the whole potential of having a home on wheels, I think. You know, I've always wanted something like that as a kid to paint. And then after doing so many things, graphic design, construction jobs, stone masonry, um, all the arts I've done, it kind of just turned into like, oh, this could be a project indoor as well, rather than just creating a beautiful art on the outside. So went down the second time and picked it up and the seal was up top here where this used to be a bed and it was, she was hiding up here and I was so stoked that I started driving home and after a while I, I kind of had the idea as well you know if she's up here she was pretty small looking that maybe I'll take this all apart and create the bed down low and and try and get that boat feel so up top now is where I put in this side I put my blankets you know so it's just basically an open cupboard kind of simply framed in there with all recycled wood most of the wood i picked up the cedar is all rough cut that i got from gogo -Go sawmill in nanaimo got it for free you know just go out and pick it up cut it down yourself all these pieces you can see here too it's just you kind of trial by error you know, i screw it a whole bunch of times to make sure it's all going to stay up but surprisingly enough these guys are trickier to make than they look having the screws in and having just basic little the basic copper holding them there. So there's all old fencing from uh, a home that I helped a woman break down her fence and take away for her. And then what I would do is just go to thrift stores and you know walk down alleys and go on adventures and with people or by myself and start finding little trinkets as I go. You know these pieces of wood. These are seat belts from inside the car that used to be in the back seat. So if I ever get pulled over, I can say. For sure there's seat belts back there for everybody. <laughs> you know, kind of get in that realm of it. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, as an artist, this is my, this is my jam. This is the place that I, uh, my sanctuary of things that I do. So from tattooing to painting to drawing to sculpture, it all kind of lives in this area. And then obviously Calvin Hobbes, it's a magical world. <laughs> and then up top here, kind of went for the bookshelf feel. And this whole process of building a van to me, because I've done a lot of construction in my day, it kind of came down to um, how do I let out my thoughts visually? You know, how do I get these ideas that I get in my head constantly from festivals, from awesome people in my life, anyway, you know? How do I get that un into a form? And it started happening where I'd just meet up with friends and we just kind of started having ideas and, you know, start stimulating each other's interests and ideas and and then working on them together. So having people come and share and learn because I was able to do all the construction stuff from my previous, you know, lessons and teachings through that and practice. And now I'm able to share it with other people and do it artistically. So it kind of turned into this nice, I'd say almost like a meditative practice, you know, where you come in and everything you do takes longer or shorter than you think. <laughs> this is the bookshelf. Ideally, I would like to put plants up here and kind of have them coming down, beautiful vines that I can kind of start training around the seats because this seat actually swivels. Um, this does as well, but it, I don't swivel it as much as this one. So that you kind of have this like feeling where you go from, you know, with one person in it, it's a, a bedroom in a sense, you know, the size of a bedroom could be. But you can get up to, I think I've had like 15 people in here and been tattooing people as they've been hanging out. So you swivel the chair around and it turns into kind of a lounge area. You know, the couch is in here now and all the cushions, which you can't see now because I've kind of re-gutted it as it gets wet. You have to change it up and, you know, find new space and new ways of doing things. So after, I guess this is my fourth year of having the van, I, um... Yeah, I'm just starting to rebuild it now. So I've taken apart like these beautiful bags that I got from my mum of coffee bags from an old coffee shop in uh, Couch and Valley. And those are my, my walls 
my siding for a while there that had the insulation behind. And what I'm thinking now is basically utilizing the extra space, you know, because it's all about the space. You, know, you want to kind of have as much as you can in a smaller area for storage. So I think what I'm going to do is take apart this back here, which was the cutting area countertop, and I had, you know, originally had different shelving up here and kind of nice beautiful pieces of wood, which I'll show you later. Um, but picture this. You know, being a big guy, cutting, you don't really have much space. For one person, yes, but when you think about, you know, two, three, friends, a family, anything like that, it's hard to be like here and talking to you and be like, oh yeah, what are you doing, you know? I'm gonna make some food and then you kind of, you just kind of close yourself off. So, what I like to do is take apart this piece here. As you see, it's got some mold on it. Let's get her out, burn it, restart, and then Kind of what I do, I use everything as much as I can to the, you know, to the most of my ability. So when I'm burning the wood, I'll take the coals and I'll use it in another project. You know, so I'm putting the intention into the other project with what was and like the stories from what I've found through this into something else. But my idea is now to take this piece out and kind of have this beautiful larger chunk that comes out around here and keep it really open and spacious and have this as a cutting zone as well so you can be looking out not through the dirt of the window but <laughs> through, the, through the cleanly beautiness you know to see the nature and that was kind of a pull as well for me with what i was doing for work at the time what was tree planting you know so i got to be in nature primarily three months of the year every single day or all day and to come home i wanted to be in nature so to come home and be in a space that is all windows, to me, was the best. You know, the best feeling to be like, ah, oh, it's all open. Everything's open. I want light to come in. I want to be able to see my surroundings. I love to drive down the street and your backyard is everywhere. You know, so you can park wherever you want and there you have nature, there you have life. In a little bubble, say, you know, take your room where you go. So what I started doing was where there's dark areas where I could be like, okay, it's a little bit dark still, like above the kitchen area here. Well, I could probably get into that. So the, the layout of the van, this is the kitchen. This is the bathroom slash washing dishes kitchen. This is the living room. This is the bedroom. <laughs> and I guess the rest is just the pudding, you know, the fun parts, the thing that's gooey and sticky that you don't really ever buy but you enjoy when you get it <laughs> so this part here is the kitchen area the bathroom area combined um, what I do back here is cook you know one of the main things in life that I love the most is to cook so I had originally I had the idea to create the kitchen tighter in because when I was first here there's a lot of blockiness and square feeling and I'm, I don't feel that energy flows properly through those um, avenues so I utilized some bowls here if you can see and I cut them all out in the inside these plates were originally on the other uh, propane stove that was in here but these are not so I used a little bit of copper wired it down around this piece of wood and these two original pieces here are the burners from what was in originally in the 1980 standard version of this that I bought. So I took those bowls, fabricated them to fit into this piece of wood, and then I cut the bowls to allow these burners to go back on top. And then underneath, some flips like this. It's a tricky, tricky little puzzle sometimes. But um, yeah, so underneath here, what I did was once I got my basic setup of the height I wanted for the tabletop so I could be sitting comfortably i.e. like this and cutting and then you know cooking while sitting I don't have to stand up and bump my head and stuff I can just be kind of comfortably here again my backyard is the beach the trees whatever wherever I want to be so uh, underneath I made it the height I wanted and what I did was took apart the original big clunky kind of aluminum framework of the original um, burner and I put in this one so this is the original piece here, and I just rewired it all underneath the wood into this copper pipe here, and then 
I don't weld, so I use JB Weld, <laughs> which is a nice, it's, you mix two compounds together and it makes a weld. So as I go, you kind of learn the little tricks and trades by talking to people. I recommend always checking your welds. It was one day I went to camp, went into the woods, came back from planting, and it was a big old smelly propane fest in here and had been leaking out of this. So it was kind of dangerous. Actually, it was really dangerous. So I had to go check it and re-weld it all. Well, that's something that you do when you kind of do, the, do it your home building, right? But yeah, so I took it apart. It had a three burner on it originally. This one here, I JB welded shut as well. So now it's only two burner to save space. Cause you don't really need, I mean, that many burners when you're working, you know, two I find is pretty efficient to be cooking, you know, if you're doing rice and then your veggies on the other part. Um, yeah, and then I just wired in the little switches, gave them a little hollow out around the piece of wood here, if you can see that. Give them a little like a hand blast router out, and just kind of repuzzled what was already there, and made it work for me. And um, seems to be having fun with that. Get these back on. Sometimes they stick, but that's part of it, right? So now what happened was over here was originally a water tank in the back that was really big and clunky as well. And what I wanted to do was, like I said, tighten everything up. So I kind of started going on my adventures, walking around um, back alleys or wherever, you know, down the streets and taking my time, being slow with life and started noticing, you know, these pieces of metal that I found for train tracks. So I kind of started wiring that in after like, you know, five or six days, you sit there and just bend and sit here for nights with like a little light on and bending the metal and just slowly processing it all and puzzling it together. And then I found these beautiful, I think it was from a chair. I think this is it from a chair. Oh, here comes some rain. <laughs> but I kind of put these little pieces together, like uh, I guess it would be in grade eight, there's a Rube Goldberg project at my school. And I loved watching people create these systems of like mouse trap kind of games where you know, you hit the one thing, it all pops around. And in the end, something happens, it pops a balloon. I think the Rube Goldberg project was. So I use that principle where I started down at the bottom here, as you can see, is a globe. From this globe, I added, I'll spin it to you. I added a bladder, so a camping bladder that my folks, we'd always come up to Defino here when we were kids, and we'd use these camping showers, these beautiful black, basically, sacks that you put the water in, put them outside, they're solar showers, so the sun hits them, they heat up. So I use that inside of the globe, and I have a nozzle here that you open, put in the water, and then I basically rewired an original pump that was in here. So some tubing, I cut some new tubing, ran it down, it's got a clamp here to cut it off the water when it's full. And it runs down gravity fed into a pump. The pump here at the moment is not running as it is winter <laughs> and things are needing to be revised. But the pump pumps it up through this tube up into this tank here and pours the water out of this beautiful vase into the first bowl, which is full of trinkets right now. Here, I can quickly remove some of these. The fun parts of life, you know, the neat things that you find on your journeys, marbles and such. Um, but what happens, in theory, when I started using it, I don't know if you can see inside there, it's a bit dusty, but I glued in these little stoppers. So I have a little design that I made. There's three holes in here. These ones fold in to the other sides. And what I found was I put a balloon over top of it and it was kind of like a plug. So it would just, the, the water would suck it down and the plastic would form in between these and it would turn into a plug. I was like, oh, that's pretty fun. You know, using recycled plastic. So this will be the first bowl where the water hits. It would pour in here and I wash my dishes out. It's plugged. There's my washing, you know, do my wash my face, brush my teeth with this bowl here. And I made it so you can remove it in and out because then for say washing dishes you can just go dump out your compost. Or when I have my buckets here, I'll dump them into here. Which I'll show you later. Boom, nice and easy, no mess. Um and then the water gets repurposed. So when I was in Costa Rica, there's nice I'm mean, sure a lot of people do this, but like a kind of three bowl system where your first bowl is your soap, soapy water, second bowl is your 
Um, no, your first bowl is your dirty water, sorry. Your second bowl is your soapy water, and your third bowl is just straight clean water. So the one bowl that's super dirty is always going to stay super dirty. Your second bowl is always going to have the soap in it, and you just wash the dishes. Your third bowl is just a quick rinse. So you're conserving water constantly. You know, you're not having to constantly be like, oh, rinsing at the sink. So I love that process. So that for me is this. So first bowl, wash your dishes, dump it out. The water actually starts running down once you pull the plug. This piece of bamboo that I put in, which is holds water naturally, runs down the bamboo, hits the second bowl here, which usually wouldn't have rocks in it, but for now it does. Uh, some beautiful stuff actually. But uh, it hits the second bowl here where I can wa you know, rinse it as it's coming out, rinse your dishes with that same water that's clean here. And then the third process would be there's a plant usually in here and the plant gets watered. So you're creating the life as you're, you know, creating your life, you're creating other life, sharing that. And the runoff will come down to the tube here and that's your last bit of water that doesn't get used. And there's a tube on the side here where it pull it out the back and drain it. So I'm trying to conserve as much as possible you know, in one process, because yeah, on the west coast we have tons of water, but in lots of places in the world don't have our fortunate scenario where water is kind of an issue for a lot of people. So I try to be conscious of, of the processes I do in life, and for me this is one of them in a fun way. You know, an artsy way where I can kind of have it as a fun tour when the kids and even big kids, you know, come in and they get to use it. They're like, whoa, it's crazy, dripping down. Like, what's it doing? I was like, I know, right? <laughs> so for me it's like, I'm just a kid and I have so much fun doing these things that I'm like they actually work you know when I'm when I'm starting to try them out because it, a lot of it for me is trial and error pieces don't fit pieces do fit things work things don't work and you have to keep on redoing and reformatting as, as you go and as it grows and as you grow you know everything changes constant so like that a living organism which is this van now changes as well so that was the process for that I kind of find like, you know, anything that you're building, it's a puzzle in a great way. And how does it fit into the scenario that you created for it? So I like to see that in wood. I love woodworking now. I've been doing that more and more as I grow. And uh, you're kind of just seeing, seeing where you can come in and, and accent what already is there. Like I was saying before with, you know, having the bark up here. A lot of this is already beautiful art made by beetles eating the wood and climbing out and living their life. You know, they're, they're not intentionally making art, but we get to see it as that and then showcase it, which I, I love to do in here with them. You know, the psilocybin kind of mushrooms as well. These big artist conks here. And I put the, these little like carving tools in. And everything in here has a story, which is the coolest part for me and for you know, everybody when I start telling them about it. It's like I can talk forever because every single piece is from somewhere and from someone and from something that I've you know someone I've met that I've connected with that has inspired me and I've inspired them that beautiful circle uh, so yeah so speaking of this baby here is the heart and soul of it <laughs> the warmth of of my home is generated by this which is a little mini made into fireplace I believe at one point it was actually a water system, like a filtration system for an ocean boat. Because when I first had it, it had a piece of glass, not this piece here, but it had a piece of glass on it. And on the inside, if you can see, it opens up. I got some wood in there already. It had a little cage in here and actually had mussels growing inside of it. So I sat on it for, I don't know how long, most things with a van, you kind of sit on it. I'll show you my closet later. <laughs> I just have tons of things that I collect and I'm like, eventually it'll work. I had to get to a process where, for myself, looking at thrift stores was my favorite part of this journey that I've done so far. I just love it. It's like trinket shopping, you know? It's like Christmas all the time, kind of feel like, ooh, that's neat. But I had to get to a point where I was like, you can only take something if you need it right then. Because somebody else could potentially need it right then. And if you don't, you're just kind of keeping it you know keeping it for yourself hoarding it away from somebody else using it if i can't use it right then i probably shouldn't have it especially living in a small space a little bit different now with the house but <laughs> but yeah so anyhow so this was an old water filtration system and i sat there for i don't know weeks thinking that i'd use it for a portal out of the roof so i could see up into the sky and you know check out the stars at night 
and I was so stoked on that idea that one day, I forget who I was talking to, but I was like, wow, it's pretty like amazing steel. So we brought it into the van here, and wouldn't you know it kind of fit. <laughs> it fit in, and the antler kind of fell in place after that, and bada bing, bada boom, the tubing came in, and now I have a fireplace. So again, that trial and error of seeing what is there, seeing what it is, and then seeing what it can be you know has it come in the process always always to see into it further than what it is initially on the outside to see the depth of it and see oh, how can i make this into something else even though it's functional you know but now it's we're giving it a, a repurposed life so yeah so i create that and then i've got the tubing that i picked up from um i think that was from the restore and i'm a great little space there same thing people bring old tools everything it's all used and all kind of last life thrown out and somebody gives it a beautiful new start and you go from there so yeah like we were saying though i'd love to have it for anybody that's doing this if i could learn from this um definitely a shelf in here would be important so you can have a little bit of space and the airflow can come in from the bottom even having a little knob on that controls the airflow would be great and then have your fire on top of the shelf so it has the air coming underneath it and it's creating a vacuum so it's actually pulling all the air up and out so it burns quickly and rapidly and it makes like amazing little fires and you know especially at night when you're kind of cozied up i leave it open now because i put a plate on the back here so i can't see through this which i eventually would love to cut it open so you can see the gears in this old weather plate here i put on in due time but um but yeah, so you get a little fire crackling and snapping and the coals dropping in here. Sometimes you get like a little garbage can fire kind of action going on too. <laughs> it's just a little bit very scary on the floor, but you know, it's wood. You can polish it out and redo it. But yeah, initially I'd love for anybody to, to learn from this would be, you know, what I'll try to do is have a sub tank on the roof. That's a water catch. I, you know, we're in the West Coast, it's going to pour rain predominantly 70% of the time I'd say. So we could have water catch here, a piping coming in, and I probably would use new just because of the kinks in this old copper pipe is a little bit harder to work with. So I'd probably use new copper and wire it all the way down the chimney into a sub tank that would sit, you know, adjacent to my cold water tank. So when you light your fire, you could have your water collecting in the tube where you lose most of your heat fires up and out of the chimney so you'd have that controlled heat in the water so you have that water heat up it holds the heat longer and then in turn you have a hot water tank so you're kind of multi-purposing your piece there while still being fun and functional um that or you know running the piping like people do with those beautiful um what are those called the like the benches that have they have that cob and then they have the piping running through it like a rocket stove kind of idea with the hot bench <laughs> something like that but for me the the idea here was to kind of pop it straight up and out with keeping again the space a spatial awareness to what i'm putting in didn't really want to take over this whole window view because i love the light coming in but yeah that would be something it will be something for the future hopefully to get that in but if anybody else is doing something like this i recommend heat is important you know, especially if you're living in the winter, it's important. I've, I've woken up a few times. I don't live in it, honestly, in the winter anymore. I've done it a little bit and woken up with a frozen mustache because I just, <laughs> the things are coming out. It's cold in here. <laughs> so to keep the heat consistent, you know, even a little fan would be great to have a little, one of those fans that gets powered by the heat. I practiced that the other day. We tried it out and it, it worked well. It cranked up. It got enough heat out here and it, it kind of circulated the air, and, which is nice. Also keeping the mold content down. So, yeah, that's the old fireplace there. She's a beaut. She does her, her job once in a while. She's got some old beautiful, old beautiful matches here from my wonderful friend, Caitlin, and her grandpa. Thank you so much. <laughs> they get damp, but they work. They hold up. Also, you know, the toilet paper roll, just in case a late night call happens, which is normal. <laughs> so, we'll go from that odd a little bit of information <laughs> to the roof <laughs> we'll go higher and higher uh, so like i said uh, i really you good there yeah cool <laughs> i really enjoyed having that piece as an idea to create 
the space on the roof, you know, so I could see up top and be like, wow, I'd love to see the stars to sleep, you know, as I think that's every person's dream when you're a camper, like I am, like to go out in nature and have your fly off your tent and, and just be sleeping in that cold, crisp air and looking out and you see darkness with flickering beauty. I don't know, for me, that's like, that's life. So what I did was I started going around town and seeing what I could do for the roof. I found a beautiful piece of plexiglass. I think it's about a quarter inch. Um, we can try and jump up on the roof and I'll show you my wangly job of it. But I found it from an uh, arena. So I went to the arena and asked them, hey, I'm doing this project, an art project. I'm making an art home, you know, basically going around and kind of trying to create this beautiful space out of recycled material and to showcase to myself and to people that less is more and you can always have repurposed uh, material before new. You know, as a tree planter, that was my whole process. I was like confused at why we're cutting forests down and I'm having to go and plant these trees in a great way, but why don't we just use what's everywhere around us? You know, there's so much material constantly that we throw out that could be repurposed and resalvaged and people are doing it a lot nowadays, which I'm stoked on. You know, even just the thrift store movement is so fun to me to be like, oh, right on, this is somebody else's thing. It has a story and I get to pick it up and feel the energy from it and re rebirth it, you know. So I went to the arena, got this beautiful chunk of plexiglass that again, as I said, if you're getting a piece of plexiglass given to you, take the biggest piece you can possibly get because <laughs> somebody will use it. That is expensive stuff. As I found trying to buy plexiglass now, holy smokes, I never want to do that. <laughs> so they tried to give me a full section of the boards, a hockey rink. And I said, I only need this little chunk. Later on, I found out, oh, phew, that was a bad decision, but learn from your lessons, right? So what happened was they gave it to me because it had paper all over it. Nice. They had paper all over it from um, when it was packaged and they couldn't use it. So I would sit on the, in the doorway here a couple of days and with a heat gun that my friend let me, Mikey Bosch, amazing guy, helped a lot with this, thank you, <laughs> and uh, we would be heat gunning and rolling, you know, for hours, rolling the paper off, and it's part of that process too, you know, you put in the time, the time goes back, so I finally got that piece cleared off the paper and kind of just looked at the roof and took an old sawzall to it and started cutting it open, <laughs> a lot of the stuff I do is just kind of, you know, feel it out you know poke around a bit obviously but I, maybe because I've had the confidence from building homes in the past to you know the different construction jobs I've had that I have that confidence to do it I recommend anybody doing it do it just go for it try it out you know know where your electrical is first obviously but you know the most things that you can do in life if somebody doesn't teach you you can learn yourself through simply trial and error or just getting out and putting your hands into it you know so I cut these pieces out into the triangles I wanted and screwed into the roof underneath all this. There are screws, big leg bolts that tie through the uh, piece of plexi that I pre-drilled holes because plexiglass is also really brittle, which I found out. You can see on this side over here, as you shift from the west coast to um, more arid, dry climates, things like wood shrinks and then the things attached to the wood will break <laughs> so lessons learning constantly but yeah so that my whole process here is when you're laying down obviously not just on the plywood some people would enjoy this <laughs> i've got the bed inside but i can look out and i've got a beautiful piece of word love thing that i got from my old house it reminds me of all my amazing friends and i get to sit here and go to sleep like this. It's the best thing ever. Quiet, peaceful, watch the rain. Maybe it's clear, maybe it's snowing, who knows. But at least I can look up and see outward. So that's my roof. This is the spot, this is what the van is, right? And a lot of people, you get in and build the van interior, all beautiful, but this is really where a van is. The engine of the van, the front housing of the van, the driver's seat, you know, jumping up in and, and feeling the van cruising you know going for that rep and being on the road you know i wrote a song with an amazing friend of mine drew <laughs> we, yeah i wrote a song like, journey with many or journey alone this is home you know this is the starting point of any vehicle this is where you want to be most comfortable so what i've got here was 
I fixed up the seats here with my mom. Amazing, amazing woman. We got to do some nice bonding time, sewing by hand. As you can see, every little stitch here by hand with these funny circular sewing needles I have no idea about, but learning. Got my old back pillow here. Gotta keep it comfy. And then I've got Merlin up front guiding the ship, the wizard, the know-how. What I want to do with Merlin, I've been trying to get this idea going here, is get this one down, this other knob. This is the sun, this is the moon. Merlin's controlling it all. And these are the waters that kind of tie them all together. Out of his hands on this side, I'd like to have all these beautiful kind of shapes and colors and trinkets of material, all sunshine and kind of woven in like a dream catcher. And on the bottom side, it'll be all the night sky, kind of dark. So when you're driving, you're, you're driving space around, you know, you're cruising it. So that's, that's an idea that's going to happen eventually. Um, I kind of do my processes like doing things or later on doing things around, you know, for setting up future self. So I'll like set up my ideas, kind of implement a little here and there's, and then as I go, I kind of work on it constantly. So yeah, that's that's Merlin there. This is, I can fire it up for you if you want to hear it. But what I've done as well, I, um, I've actually learned how to become a mechanic through the amount of times it's broken down, you know, so, Thank you BCAA as well, <laughs> but I, I recommend that. It's amazing to have when you have a home on wheels, for sure. I've been broken down in so many spots where it's like in the middle of nowhere, and what are you gonna do? And then all of a sudden, I was like, a person is working construction, you walk up and they're like, yeah, we have a stat radio, we can phone ahead to BCAA. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there it is. What's up, Dom? <laughs> but, um, so the engine, as it constantly breaks down, I've had at times where this comes right off, and I've been driving down the road, like tinkering with like a, a ratchet set or something on parts of the engine, like holding up the alternator and um, trying to see like it's kind of firing, backfiring at me, and I've been like, oh yeah, okay, like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'll figure it out, you know. And then I pick up a hitchhiker, and they're like, holy smokes, what's going on there? And I'm like. Do you mind doing this? Like, just put the ratchet in there, and you know, we're trying to figure it out together. And they're like, okay, this is trippy, I've never done this. I'm like, me neither, it was crew. It was like Flintstone style, right? So, uh, all over time though, you learn from people like my cousin, and amazing people, um, mechanics, like, oh man, I've got so many beautiful mechanics, like Bauman, and an Imo, legend. Helps me every single time. I'm always like, Bauman, I'm, I'm broken down, man. He's like, bring it in, buddy. Like, okay, you're gonna learn some more. But you know, going and helping and, and being a part of the process, I, I never cared about any vehicle really. Like I've cared about this, right? Because it's a home now for me. And the idea of it's like to maintain that structural integrity. You know, keeping a 1980 vehicle going is, it takes time, but it's also like learning that it's a, a funniest puzzle ever. I'll turn this baby off for you. Funniest puzzle ever, you know? It's, it's an easy engine to work on when you actually start getting into it and putting the time in nuts and bolts, right? So, um, yeah, so that was pretty fun, tinkering with that. But now, I've, because of that, I've kind of, you know, become this, like, do-it-yourself mechanic and learned how to be aware of the engine, at least, if nothing more, which is nice. Um, so this part of the van, too, to me, I almost really want to keep it original, you know, the OG part of the van, um, where it's that blue, that kind of, like, you know, this beautiful... A design like leathery material where it's got that kind of diamond shape to it I find that so amazing and then adding these little quirky bits you know so carving these little burls and making them my window also my <laughs> if I close it how I open my door <laughs> you know as things fall apart you have to rebuild <laughs> so it's kind of that whole process of a van living too of, of Tiny home living, I'm sure everybody else can say it. It's even big home living, things break down, you gotta fix them constantly, you know. But this part to me is fun too. We have the idea of Ryan, my roommate in here. Amazing, amazing person as well, obviously. I'm gonna say everybody's amazing, how's that? And it covers all bases, thank you to everybody for being amazing. <laughs> it's the truth. But uh, these guys, so what my idea was, all right, our idea was we're gonna travel down to Central America we ended up going to Peru and Ecuador instead and having an amazing journey, nonetheless, right? But eventually I'll take this down and what I want to do here is 
there's two of these bars on both sides and kind of trying to always think about like well how can you accommodate more people you know the experience is yeah it's fun to have by yourself but when you have an experience with more and more people constantly getting to share this space with people it, that's home to me you know that's the adventure it's, if i couldn't share this with anybody you know what is it then so to me it's like yeah let's showcase it let's share it let's let it be other people's it's not my van it's our van you know it's a way of being but to have now a piece of plywood that you would cut out I'll cut out and I'll come around the wheel here and go to the other side. So get two people in on the bed, one person with a hammock that goes above the bed, and then this will go across and you can have a person sleeping on this with their mat and then sticking their head or their feet out, you know. Especially if you're traveling somewhere warm here, a little bit colder, but in the summer it'd work I think. So something like that to me is gonna be a fun project. Also more and more projects, you know, eventually I'll, I was looking at like how do you make like a house, every house Again, looking at what is around me, every house has a deck most time, right? So, could I have something that folds up nicely to here? That would be three sheets of wood with hinges on them. And then you kind of fold it down like a puzzle. So one flips down, and then on top of that, that flips down. And on the side of the van, you'll have, I'll have posts. And these posts, when this flips out, these posts lock into the bottom and hit the ground and lock into brackets are on the side here so I'm actually getting this beautiful chunk of deck that comes out that's your backrest there and you can be up on top lounging looking out per se Long Beach for me up here looking out soaking up the like rays love and life you know <laughs> so I was like that will be something I'm gonna do eventually that's gonna be really fun uh, this is kind of fun a little bit rusty right now but what I did there was um, while tree planting there was a plastic drill on there that was kind of broken, so I went to um, another dump and found a metal bin and took the back of a fridge off. So I cut the backing off a fridge, painted it, and uh, notched it in here. So this is where you can get your hand in there and pop your hood. But, um, get that up there. But yeah, so then you got that protection. I haven't had many bugs in it, which is awesome. I don't like ever killing things, so it's nice to not have too many bees. Hopefully never get a bee in there. Um, and it seems to protect the engine, you know, the air intake and stuff like that. So what happened with this paint job? I, like I said, I always wanted to paint a van. That's the first thing of ever having a van and then turning it into a home. That was my pull originally when I was a kid. So what I did here um, with Olivia was amazing. We took paint and we just covered the front end with paint. One night we drove out to Kennedy Lake, I think it was, and we just drove logging roads. So we covered the entire front end with paint and we started driving down these logging roads and it was a really tight bush like area. So cedar bough and um, salmon berries painted the entire side of the van. So all of that there was cedar bough and salmon berries just dragging along the side of the van, pulling the paint. But kind of threw in a little bit of black over top of it to get this tree look and I'm kind of thinking that it'll turn into a silhouette of trees and then this will be kind of space you know so having like those stars and the shooting like planets and having it kind of all building a layer on top of each other such as life right so that was really fun that was a neat kind of exploration of taking art further and again going back to nature with art right which is cool this baby up top here built it <laughs> a lot of the things I built were yeah to build for for amplifying the experience of the van itself but also to fix little problems with the van as, as an old vehicle you know all of the seals around the windows on these two were are shot so I built this little kind of makeshift I guess you would call it awning um, just simplistically kind of sitting there and this, I think this awning itself has ripped off three different times of driving it, the stories of, of it, right? So at a festival one time, they were building Atmosphere Music Festival at one of the stages, and I was driving out with these, these awesome guys that I met there that were volunteering and you know, all confident cruising out, and they had just set up the tent. It took them eight hours to set up, and I nailed the guy wire, and it ripped the entire roof rack off, smoked all these things off, and just like almost took the whole tent down. <laughs> that was that would have been intense i probably wouldn't have been allowed to go back the next season <laughs> so yeah the trial and tribulation of of beating in things up and then refixing but i mean 
suitable to what I'd love to do now is surf as well and be out in nature again. Got this little awning here for the future. I like I was saying earlier, I'd love to. I'm gonna cut out a big chunk of this and build a bay window right in. So take out the, instead of kind of band-aiding it, take it all out, but build a bay window so it'll kind of come out on angles here, down and up. And I'll have all the plants in here. It'll give me more space inside and kind of give it more of that like, I guess it'd be like a living room effect, you know? So that's kind of for future coming up here, maybe next the next month, which is gonna be fun. I find once I start building anything on the van, it, it, it just goes so fast because I get so into it, right? And just, you can just go and go and go and go and people are like, you have to eat. You haven't eaten anything yet. I'm like, I can't eat. I got, I got ideas. <laughs> I'm learning to calm those ideas. You know? <laughs> but yeah, so that's also fun. The window up top, again, putting more light in. Built this little guy at my parents' house there. As you can see, it starts to peel away and things need to be fixed, but for now it's fun, kind of like a little eye-shaped window there to pull in some more light. Pick up the wood, framing it off. The back side as well has another window that just slides open and closed. It's plexiglass. I uh, picked that off at Gabriola, and then same thing, just cut it out, wear a mask, cut it out, plunk it in, screw it down, and, and it worked. <laughs> Eventually again, oh, that's a kind of fun idea. So I've got this beautiful crank I found. So I like to find pieces and then see how I can implement them later into art projects and anything, but for the van especially, you know. So I've got this unreal crank and I was thinking, take these two doors right off. Um, and I'm, this is probably gonna be a Gabriel mission with my friends that helped build the other door because they're amazing. So take, take these two doors right out and build basically a big wooden door and this crank will be on the side and you can actually crank it down like a drawbridge. It opens up, legs come out, and it turns into a patio deck that you can step up on, get your food from this side, you know, come out here, cook, do all your things, take your pot and pan. This thing's sweet, I gotta show you this too. I don't know if anybody's seen this ever. That's legit. In a van, that is the best thing I've ever owned. It's like two sides, you can make your rices on one side, your veggies on one side, your eggs, your potatoes, whatever keep it hot, you take it to the beach, snacking, those are the best, this is the best thing I could find. And I found another one, you know, gotta sneak that out. Don't wanna hoard things, but I found the second one somewhere. Can't tell you where, it's secret, secret location. <laughs> but yeah, I think that'd be cool, eh? like the drawbridge kinda come down, make a patio here, and then, you know, have that extra homey feel to it. So my life goal is Wangly. Um, basically what I've done here, is I first gutted it down to nothing. I took everything out of the van completely, right down to the floor and built everything from the floor up. Um, so what I did was keep the parts of the van that were still working, you know, by learning, I looked at what was already, I learned what it could do and how I could implement it into my version of what it was. So I took, this used to be in, in between the two chairs and this battery actually powers the lights. So I didn't really change anything in a great way. I added to it, I added a little inverter that usually, because it's in, in its process of rebuilding right now, which is gonna turn into a beautiful shelf. But originally it had a cage on it and this would come down so I could access from this side and it was all enclosed in here. So I could reach in and access this. The inverter sits, it would sit up here and I can run my power from AC to DC, or DC to AC, vice versa. So what I'm doing is these little cables here run from the power switch that I have just in this little knob here, so it stays safe, because I've popped so many fuses in the middle of the night, and I'm like, I don't have a flashlight. <laughs> Trying to maneuver in pitch black. Come on. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'm keeping that guy nice and safe, but what these do is they power all the lights basically and it runs underneath the van which I drilled out through the wheel well. This sits right on the wheel well just like this side over here is a wheel well. Um, I just built the box around it and you can see mud comes up so I'm gonna have to do something with that in this new kind of next couple of weeks here. Um, probably put this underneath here to be honest with you so it's out of the way. But in its time it served the purpose 
it connected to the alternator so when I'm running the van it's actually powering the battery again so it charges the battery and then it gets full juice and what it's doing as well is, is not draining my my main battery right so my main battery is for the engine fires a van if I ever get stuck you can take this apart put it in the main engine there and boom you're back on the road moving and you just don't have your lights working for a bit until you want to go charge it or whatever you know a lot of the time I go out to the woods and if you get in the pinch out there it's nice to have a backup plan so it's cool to have two batteries so it's just that is basically that's all it covers it gives me power so I can power up my computer you know watch movies at night if I would like to power up my phone if I'm away from things and it's nice to have cell service I love not having my phone on me most of the time as well but it's good to have a backup plan so inverter and lights and now the lights were wired in by my amazing friend Jesse Belanger beauty of a friend uh, I grew up with him in Shawnigan Lake and we just had this idea you know he's a he's a journeyman he works on rides theme park rides so he travels the world and builds these theme park rides and he goes to different places like Dubai and resets them and he came in here and he said I've never done anything like this and I'm like man you build theme park rides like <laughs> so this is nothing compared to that but because it's a car it's a van it's a house now he had no experience with it and I definitely had no experience with it so we kind of just took it in stride and would figure out as we went so I could do the parts for me or I could find the pieces to put in the parts for him or how is he going to wire the pieces that I'm asking him to do you know okay I've got this idea and he'd be like oh yeah sweet that'll work and so I'm kind of like bouncing that creative side off of that more mechanical mathematical side right and then we start wiring it together and we came up with an idea up here amazing lady from the recycling depot in Nanaimo I'm sorry I forget your name right now but she's a beauty but came up with the idea of hey why not use a strainer so we wired this strainer in and you can see in here just cut the top out and this is an old ball that we put in here wired it through drilled into the sides and have a switch very simple but for us we were stoked you know for tied it all up up top there we've never done something like this i'm sure people are gonna laugh and be like oh it's easy but it was a little bit tricky <laughs> but once it's on one of those things the synchronicities of life it legitimately fits perfectly around the bulb when it's closed and that was like <laughs> we were freaking out yeah <laughs> dancing and grooving <laughs> that's amazing but what i love about this light is it is it's like a dance party you know this is the kitchen area this is where you need the most light and at the same time you want it to be fun and fresh and you're always feeling tight and feeling really good and stoked up and you have people over it's kind of like you know i'm having my dinner party i'm gonna flick my light on and so it gives this beautiful pattern and especially at night it, it really like ruminates through it all and, and it gives it like a nice kind of warmth that's again and you can open it up and it blasts the light down and outwards like a disco ball basically but a recycled old thrown out disco ball <laughs> once used for steaming vegetables now it's steaming up the party <laughs> but yeah so we got that guy wired up there there's another bit of wiring over here that oh i'll put another light above the bathroom area so you can you know see your pretty self whilst washing your face or brushing your teeth you want those things to be shiny clean all the time which i also just found out awesomely enough you can use charcoal chew it up clean your teeth that was feed. I was like, oh, sweet. <laughs> hippie life. <laughs> Not really hippie, but hippie in that spirit, you know? So the second one, same thing. We wired it up in, cut these out. Also, I recommend to anybody, wear a mask. I don't do that often. I, my practices of construction, I think maybe because I've done it so long, are pretty like free form organic style, but I recommend wearing mask because everything in here is fiberglass. So every time you drill a hole, every time you cut, you're getting fiberglass particles everywhere around you. And, you know, as I started from the ground up, this is the last part. So I'm like drilling and cutting the roof and stuff like this. And there's fiberglass everywhere and it's itchy and it's in your lungs. And yeah, it's not ideal. So wear a mask for sure, you know, because it, this is all pretty scratchy and not ideal for your um, systems. But these ones here, same thing, we wired up this guy. I kind of like this one now. I just put him back on. He originally had something bigger here, but I kept on hitting it. So this guy to me reminds me of like, I love to build something around it where it's like a beehive feel, you know, and that's like the honey, that kind of like juicy interior. So at night again, these lights you can't see ideally right now, but maybe we can get another night version of it. 
but these are my kind of reading section lights. So I'm laying in bed or sitting here with friends or whatever against the wall and these kind of make this beautiful ambiance and this like nice orangey kind of warm glow again. I'm big up on the warmth of like a small space, you know. I feel like a little cottage that you're in. So yeah, so these are old bowls and then I don't even know what this piece of glass, I think I got it from Recycling Depot, I'm sure. <laughs> But just super simple, old bowls, little lights up and top. You can see on these ones a little better. Just little beautiful car lights. Easy fix. I screwed out the bowl and wired it up and put the bowl back in. Bada bing, bada boom. You know, maybe eventually, you know, when you go to festivals and see these beautiful, like, jellyfish kind of feelings, maybe eventually they'll have something that kind of comes more organically, wood-wise. Looks wispy and kind of pulls the light with it. And then there's one more light here. That's originally wired in as well, just on a switch, which you can take off. And I think I'll probably undo this and rewire it with some lighting that goes all along underneath. Because that's something as well that is nice, is to have different variations of light. It makes a small space feel completely different every time you turn something on, you know? So the kitchen area's got a different light, the living room's got a different light, you know, the bedroom has a different light. So if you kind of do these little little tricks it makes everything seem different in a great way and your space seem a lot larger than it actually is and seem uh, multifaceted i guess so yeah that's the lighting system so far in the future as well i would love to off of this one tie in a large light and then a secondary light behind all the bark here that could have little twinkles you know so these little leds that flutter and twinkle in these different areas and you have your little mushroom homes that at night it looks like there's little fires going off and I don't know pixies or goblins or whatever creatures you prefer floating around and behind this bark and you know paint little doors on there and kind of give it this little fantasy world you know we're living in it's the space we call home is so beautiful it's just amazing to play with that space and be a kid you know that's that's why I think I live my life so fulfilling nowadays because I want to be a kid. I want to share with people and laugh and play constantly and inspire people to be more stoked on the small beautiful things of life while still also noticing the large grand scale of how epic it is that we're on this space. This huge rock spinning in circles in the middle of openness, you know. So give that in the van feel I think is my kind of whole persona of this home is that ambiance of like what is this and why is it and sometimes it just is and that's the most beautiful thing you know just get to be stoked all the time this here as well the grounding bell <laughs> so yeah that's this is kind of my jam my home on and off um so many amazing people have been a part of it you know a piece like this again i can talk forever every piece has a story but my grandfather and grandmother's door when I'm ripping apart their basement. Um, this beautiful old door. You know, there's something here, like the handle I'd love. I kind of like when everything does something, you know, everything has like an extra little sneaky purpose where people can come in and like, I love when kids come into here when it's fully set up because they start touching things and oh man, what is this doing? Something makes a noise or, or lights up or like, oh geez, I didn't expect that. And like that aha uh -huh, kind of like wow factor because that's what I love. And I'm like, whoa, sneaky, you know? <laughs> but now it's I, I'm getting a lot of adults, whatever that is. But uh, getting that into because, you know, start playing. But if you could twist this handle and maybe something would come down the line here and boing, pop up, but be functional, you know, at the same time as fun. Um, so yeah, anyhow, back to the door, you know, this door, beautiful, beautiful old door that was going to get kind of tossed out and I started putting the mural on it, found out that wasn't really like going to be that feasible, it's pretty heavy <laughs> as a door, to, so I brought it in here to originally put it in as the back um, kitchen area countertop and then I cut it too short and I was like, oh crap, man, I just wasted the door, That's, I don't know how old probably like 60 years old <laughs> so I went to take it out and as I was taking it out it literally locked in place right where it is I just hit the wall and I was like oh all right you know did a quick cut one screw and that's where it's been ever since so it's kind of those like fun synchronicities of life that this whole van process has been for me too is like exploring the unexplored the intuitions of life and like that feeling where it's like 
hey, if it's going to work, leave it. Let it be, you know? Sometimes we force it so hard when it doesn't need to be forced. And that's a kind of meditative state that I've learned through building this van. You know, working with, like, for example, one of these um, hinges took me, like, the notch in. I don't know which one, but these kind of hinges, I notched them all in. I think it's probably this one, actually. You can see on the cut. And I don't know why, but it literally took me, like, four or five days to understand how this hinge opening is gonna work with this door. And it was like the most ludicrous battle I've ever had in my mind. I couldn't even deal with it. I would go inside and be storming and feel like, oh, the court's on something here. And I'm like, I'm just like, oh, I got some space. I don't know what's going on. I'm freaking out. I don't ever swear. I was swearing and I was like, how is this hinge beating me? You know, it can only open two ways, but it was just, something in my brain it was not happening and then i finally overcame it and figured it out and man that was a beautiful day <laughs> but you can see here like i cut pieces out i put them in i had to rewire pieces back down and i was like holy smokes it was just one of those processes but i think for that that lesson of patience constantly you know patience 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 it's gonna happen and maybe that's one of those things you need to learn constantly like, hey, if you're forcing it maybe you to see a new perspective and try something different and that's kind of for me is is my whole brain in a sense and i'm happy to share with people now like with building the door it was always kind of hidden inside my process and what i do in my own head in my space and that was like okay let people see let people be involved in it you know let people be inspired by it and then tell that kind of story to let other people do that too bring out their weird bring out that beautiful you you know showcase who you are as a person and what you have inside and everybody's beautiful everybody has some kind of magic you know just a lot of people hide it inside well, why not show it off and the magic comes in all forms you know it can be angry too it can be happy it can be all levels of you and which i learned going through this is there's every day is beautiful no matter what because we're feeling emotions we're being stoked you know so i was happy that i was unhappy for so long with that <laughs> With that there guy, and it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was problematic for a few times, but conquered that, you know, move forward. <laughs> Learn from your mistakes and go on.